Well, hey, welcome back. Today we got another hot tip on raising capital, and this one's all about you getting booked on podcasts. Now, getting booked on podcasts is a huge shortcut to raising capital, and on today's video, we're going to give you some really, really solid tips on exactly how to do that. In fact, I followed these tips and got booked on over 150 shows in about a year and a half. You can do the same thing. It doesn't have to be 150, but you can get booked on a lot of shows. Check it out. All right, so the first tip about getting booked on a show as a podcast guest isn't actually about getting booked on the show. It's about why you want to get booked on the show. So the tip is make sure that you understand what you want to get from being featured on that particular show. What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish from that podcast episode, right? So when I was getting booked on shows, I had a very, very specific goal in mind. I wanted to create curiosity about what it was doing, what I was up to with helping other real estate investors to raise capital, all right? So that was the main focus of my podcast guessing. And then I would push people to do a certain thing, like grab a copy of my free book or book a call or whatever it was. I had a very, very specific goal in mind. So you need to start with that in mind as well. What do you want to accomplish from this? Is your goal really, well, at the beginning, if you haven't done very many podcast interviews, I would recommend the goal is to show people that you already have a connection with that you know your stuff, right? Because you and I telling people what we're up to with real estate investing, you and I telling people that we know our stuff is one thing. But them seeing that we've been interviewed by somebody else on a podcast is a completely different thing. That really elevates our status, our stature in the eyes of our existing connections. Well, geez, Dave's been interviewed on a podcast. He must know his stuff, right? That's the idea. So that, if I were you and you're just getting started with getting booked on podcasts, that would be goal number one. Goal number two could be, hey, to make connections with other people, to expand your network, right? So you want to reach the podcast host's audience and you want to get some of them to take action and connect with you. If that's the case, then you want to have a very specific reason and a very specific thing that you want to encourage people to do, right? Grab your free thing or book a call or, you know, connect for a Zoom coffee. Whatever it is that you want them to do, be very, very strategic about your goals right from the get-go. So have that in mind first. Tip number two is don't just think about getting interviewed on real estate podcasts. Uh, so this sounds kind of weird. I mean, I've got a real estate focused YouTube channel. My real my podcasts are all real estate focused, but you got to be strategic about that as well. I mean, think about that. If you're getting interviewed on somebody's podcast and everybody they're interview interviewing is trying to do the same thing you're doing, then their audience is going to be kind of numb to that. Does that make sense? So if everybody they interview is rock star syndicators that are looking for passive investors and that's what everybody's pitching on those shows, well, guess what? You're going to have a lot of competition. Now, on the other hand, if you start looking outside of the real estate sphere, and let's say you're a local mom and pop real estate investor, and you're looking to connect with other local people who are ideally accredited investors, then I would really focus on getting, getting on other local podcasts that really don't have much to do with real estate investing. And then share your story, share your strategy, share it in a way that non-real estate people can understand. And just be careful here. I'm not going to give you any legal or, or advice or anything like that, but be careful that you're not overtly soliciting investors on any kind of show because that's a shortcut to getting in big trouble with the Securities Commission. So you don't want that to happen. But it is a good way to get exposure. And if you've got something like a lead magnet, if you've got a, a free book or something like that that you can offer people, then that's a good way you can say, hey, go to this website and get a copy of my book. And that's how you can start accumulating more people uh, into your investor prospect database and starting that relationship. So don't just look at real estate investment shows. Look at other shows that your ideal prospect is probably listening to. All right, tip number three for getting booked on podcasts is to go in with a bit of a unique angle. All right, so if you're in the property flipping business, um, you need to kind of come up with something a little bit different about what you're doing versus the other 87 flippers that have already been on that particular show. That's another advantage for going on to non-real estate shows. 
is they typically haven't had a lot of real estate investors on them. But say you are getting booked on a show like mine and you want to talk a little bit about what you're up to with real estate investing, try to figure out what is the, the secret sauce that you bring to the table? What is the unique story that you have? What is the different kind of situation you've experienced that most people haven't? What is the uh, proprietary marketing thing that you're doing that's working really well for you? What can you bring that's a little bit different that can make you more memorable? It doesn't have to be radical. It doesn't have to be crazy. But if you've got something that differentiates you, that's going to help a lot. And last but not least, tip number four for getting booked on a podcast. This is my favorite one. And that is to lead with the giving hand. So again, I've been podcasting for years now, and I can't remember how many pitches I've had from podcast guests or prospective podcast guests, or more, more likely podcast companies that try to get their clients booked on shows. Lots and lots and lots of them. And they're all the same. It's like, hey, here's my one sheet. Here's how successful I am. Here's how smart I am. Here's how great I am. Here's why I should be on your show. And that's okay, but it gets boring after a while. I learned this from somebody, I wish I remembered her name. She was a brilliant, brilliant process. Very, very different. She led with the giving hand first. What does that mean? That means that when I got this email from this lady, this real estate investor who wanted to be on my show, she said, hey, Dave, I love your show. I've been listening to it for a while. In fact, I really liked the episode you did with whoever, where you and whoever were talking about this, this, and that. Okay, okay, cool. So I saw that she'd actually listened to a couple episodes. She was referring to an episode. It was an intelligent you know, comment that she made. And then she went on to say, you know what? I really liked your show so much that I went ahead and I gave you a five-star rating and review. And here's a screenshot of, of my rating and review for your show. And there it was, right in the email, was a screenshot of her rating and review. I was like, wow. Because here's the thing. She led with the giving hand. What does every podcast host want? Every podcast host wants five-star ratings and reviews. That's how they build up their podcasts. That's how they get more listeners. That's how they accomplish their goals. So she led in by giving me value first before she even asked for anything. And then the way she asked to get on the show was very, very smart. She said, oh, by the way, Dave, I would, I would be so honored to be considered to be a guest on your show. So very soft kind of entrance. I, I think I have something a little bit different here. I like to talk about whatever her specialty was. I think that might be of value to your listeners. Uh, if you agree, I would love to be on your show or be considered for your show. Please let me know. Bang, right away, I answered her. She got booked on the show right away. She got VIP treatment. Why? Because she gave first. And then that was such a brilliant idea. I said, hey, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to rob and duplicate. <laughs> and I did. And I got my VA to help out with this. And we reached out to a whole bunch of different podcast hosts. And we did this exact same process. That went a, lot way, a long way to getting me booked on 150 shows. All right. So you don't have to go get carried away like that. But if there are some shows that you'd like to be booked on, that is a very, very good way to go about it. And you're going to have a much higher likelihood of being accepted on the show. So there you go. There are four different tips on how you can get booked on a podcast. If you like that idea, well, guess what? I've got a shortcut for you because I'm actually looking for guests. I'm looking for people just like you to come onto my show and to share their stories. I'm looking for what I call everyday people investing in real estate. So if you have even one successful deal under your belt, then go ahead, book a time to be interviewed on my show. I'd love to talk about your journey, where you started, where you're at now, where you're looking to go, what the challenges are, what you've had to overcome. And this is a great way for you to gain that exposure, to uh, create that authority amongst your followers, to connect with other people in the real estate business. So go ahead, go visit DaveInterviewsYou.com and pick the day and the time that works best for you. And I look forward to chatting with you.